<laughs> don't breathe, don't blink, yeah. and action. <laughs> you can go whenever you're ready. Um, congratulations on the film. On Thank a you. scale of one to ten, how scary is this? Oh, I mean, you're asking someone that shot the movie and knows all the tricks and all the scares when they're coming, and I still think it's a 10, so it must be pretty scary. <laughs> and, and what attracted you to the role? Because it's a great female character role. Yeah, exactly that. You know, um, uh, the fact that this was a very different way to portray a, a lead female in a horror movie, I think he more or less used to. Um, there being uh, a lot more skin and a lot more kind of... Uh, feminism and things like that, sex, over sexualized for females when it comes to horror movies, and and this one doesn't. We don't do that, you know. We we try and break all the cliches and and stay away from from that, and and just be real, because at the end of the day, you just want people to believe believe it. And a lot of the time, um, you know, we felt that when women are, are the lead of, of horror movies like this, it, it just gets a little like posy and we just wanted to keep it really, really real so we just, we did that. And you, you come across as very much, you know, the, the fine girl next door that everyone wants to be friends with. Did you, you've got a lot of cool tricks in this film, did you sort of pick anything up that you don't thought, oh maybe I can use that in the future? <laughs> well, hopefully and hopefully not. So, um, a bit of both. Uh, the the, the kind of cool tricks that I was picking up were like working with the stunt coordinator and um, more on the martial arts side because I love fighting and, and, and choreographed fight scenes and I've always had a huge passion for stunts so it was just really cool to, to get in there and learn how to twirl a knife and, um, and, and you know I had this obsession with the onset fire poker that I would just literally, ha I had it in my hand 24 seven and I was just walking around practicing like my baton twirling skills basically and then we never ever used it. But um, you know, I, I, I picked up like knife twirling and baton twirling skills on this film so that was pretty fun. That's really cool. Yeah. And there's loads of gore on the set. How, mm -hmm. how was everyone with that? I mean, is it, obviously when we're watching, I was a bit like, like that but yeah. how is it for you when you're sort of amongst it all? Well, it's 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 more in, just interesting because you know you'll sit in the makeup chair and um, you're kind of more used to stepping out of a makeup chair and all glamorous. But we would step out of makeup chair and be covered in blood and scratches and you know uh, the prosthetics department was just exceptional. So whenever we had um, a a good gore gag. It was a matter of watching how it would come together and uh, and all the effects that were involved in making that happen and look really real. And it's it's a big effort with prosthetics and it doesn't always go the way that you plan. So you have to have a backup plan and then probably another backup plan to the backup plan, um, which which luckily we did. And it was just it was it was it was really cool watching all the tricks of the trade unfold. And I think. Uh, unfortunately, when you know all that behind the scenes stuff, so watching it, it doesn't affect me so on the gore factor because I'm more in tune with how we got there in the first place. But I can see how the, through the magic of, of movie making, you know, it looks really horrific, which is <laughs> good. Was, was there anything on set that made when you know when you go home after a night, your day's work that, that sort of scared you, it stuck in your mind? Um, yeah, more so the fact that uh, we were shooting this movie all night shoots, six nights a week for a month. So I'd never saw daylight um, for a month, which was really unusual. And it was, it was pretty heavy going from shooting a horror movie to coming home at 9am. We would wrap, we would get home and have to go to sleep. And it's really hard to switch your brain off when you've been in that adrenaline mode and, and dealing with all the blood and the gore on set and I think it was more the fact that we were staying in like this really dodgy motel in Columbia, Missouri, middle of nowhere where we had some really interesting crowds coming through each night and um, and that sort of messes with your brain a little bit and also the television that was on at those hours were like the first 48, Investigation Discovery, A Thousand and One Worst Ways to Die. So I'm literally, you know, coming off the set of a horror movie, going home to turning on the TV, which was also kind of its own horror movie. And it was just a really bizarre, like, what it does to your mind a little bit. I started sleeping with a knife under my pillow, not gonna lie, <laughs> did happen, just for a month or so. But yeah, it does, it messes with your head a little bit. 
And, and were you a horror fan sort of growing up? I mean, what sort of films did you sort of go up with? Well, from a very young age, horror movies was my obsession. And I mean way too young to even watch them. Like six years old, walking into the video store, narrowing, zoning into the horror section and just... I grew up with, you know, Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, all the Chucky series, Stephen King's It movies, Jaws, uh, Pet Cemetery. Um, you name it, you know, like I, I loved it and I saw all of them and I just had this obsession with horror and I'm not sure why and it, now that I'm a bit older I think it's just when we go to the movies we just want to have an experience, whatever that may be and with horror you're kind of guaranteed to have that kind of out of body experience where you get to be scared but not with the realism of you really have to genuinely be scared, like nothing's going to happen to you, you just get to have that feeling so it's just the experience I think. And what do you think makes a good horror film? Uniqueness, because there's um, just so many horror movies out there and, uh, and when you're talking horror, you're talking about scaring people. So uh, you want the scares to be unpredictable, you want the storyline to be unique and you want the characters to be relatable, but at the same time, um, uh, you want to feel something for them. So when people are basically dying, you don't just not care, you know, and you're just sort of waiting for the next one to go. You kind of go, no, not that one. I really like that guy or this girl or whatever it was. And so we find a way to establish the personalities within the characters quickly. And so even, you know, when they're quick to go, you, you feel something for them. You're affected. Brilliant. Thank you. You've been winding me up. Right, right. sorry. For you.